those who are resilient, possibly even flourishing in their hard stories, is something the world so desperately needs is, wait, how, how are you doing that? How are you living into your really hard circumstances you would have never chosen? God is using all of this in such powerful ways that I really have a unique opportunity to be a voice for the voiceless in this world. I mean, the disabled community does not have many people who are able to articulate deep truth and are underrepresented everywhere you go. And they're not in the world many times, and they should be. And I think the world is starting to wake up to that need. And I get to do that with my life. I get to be a poster child for one of the coolest communities I think that is out there, which is the disabled population. It is a huge blessing and I do not take it for granted to get to inspire people. That is such a gift. But I think if it just stopped with getting to inspire them, that like, you know, maybe you're inspired for a few minutes by somebody's story, but like it kind of ends there, you know, like you're like, yeah, cool, but tomorrow my reality hits and it's not this mountaintop moment or whatnot. Um, so if I can point someone to a perspective change, um, that's very different. And I think that's the opportunity we have in terms of deeply inspiring people is to change how they view their lives. I believe to my core that this was a special calling, that I am called to live a life worthy of, that this wheelchair is actually a profound seat of honor that God has really risen me up through a wheelchair to, um, to, I mean, think about it. I'm on the stage right now, I'm elevated. I'm in a special seat and that's very unique. This is not something that um, most people sit in every day. Everyone in the room has invisible wheelchairs, we call them, that everybody's got their stuff. And this stuff's on the outside, but I got loads more inside that you don't see. And honestly, everybody does. A lot of able-bodied people are walking around and look totally normal, but they got broken hearts, let's be honest. I've got a broken body and a broken heart in some ways, because we all do. Prayer has been a huge part of my story from the very beginning. Before I was even awake and I was in a coma for two months, but before I even knew what was going on during that two months, the prayers of people all over the world rallying to pray for me was incredible. My prayers have changed dramatically since then and changed all along the journey thus far. We're 11 years out and now my prayer is that all of my tr hardships and sufferings, and this is true for us all, could be used in the lives of other people and could be a deep gift, which is so insane to say. But my deep prayer is that in the lives of my children, in the lives of my husband, my friends, my family, that my terrible sufferings could somehow be used in their lives to teach them things they need to know, probably they didn't know they needed to know, but that's what we get to do for each other in seasons of deep pain is, is really pray that others will learn the right lessons by how we get to live in these circumstances. And I might add, I think a consistent prayer that I, I do pray and want everyone in pain to pray is that we wouldn't waste this. Pain is pain, no matter what it is. If it's you going through it, it hurts. And you're seeking others who are going through it and have gone through it to say, look, she can do it too. So there's this real universal pain thing that happens, I think, where you were like, I, I can't handle my life. But she thought the same thing. And she thought the same thing. And it's all different things we're dealing with, but the core of life not going as planned is really this theme that we're longing to see examples of. And I'm like totally a product of that.